get your paper towels at the ready because today we're revisiting the messy but marvelous magnetic liquid that is ferrofluid. If you've not seen this stuff under a macro lens before, I definitely recommend sticking around and I'll show you what it looks like in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and yes, today we're getting the ferrofluid out of storage. I've had this stuff for a little while, I've done a video on it before, uh, but I've got a few more ideas that I'd like to try out. So today we're going to break open uh, the seal on this very messy black magnetic liquid. If you've not seen this stuff before, it's uh, it's very, very strange. When you introduce a uh, magnetic field to this a seemingly oily black liquid, it behaves in very strange and interesting ways, creating big spikes that stick out uh, and line up with the magnetic field emanating from the magnet. I've got this great big magnet here. It's very strong and it can be a little bit dangerous. So if you're going to go and try this out, uh, make sure you follow all of the safety procedures that come with a magnet of this kind of strength. I'll put a link down in the description where you can get a magnet like this and also where you can buy a little bit of ferrofluid. It's quite cheap and it's really fun to play around with. However, it is very, very messy. Uh, it leaves black stains all over the place. It will stain your skin, it will stain your carpet and your clothes. So make sure you're prepared before you crack this stuff open. I'm going to uh, crack open my bottle now and maybe you'll get a little bit of a taste of how uh, messy this stuff really is. I'm setting up down on my coffee table as usual for my first shot and I've got my ferrofluid out. It's been sat in this bottle uh, since we used it last, but you can see that it's stained the entire bottle. It's all brown and horrible in there. Uh, and this has been sat for uh, probably over a year now and it's still not uh, come out of this bottle. In fact, it's pretty hard to get out of any surface. This was the shooting surface that I was using last time. It's just a piece of uh, clear perspex, a little bit of plastic. And you can see that this is actually still stained on here. I've used all sorts of cleaning products on it. I tried to clean it really well last time and it didn't come out. So I can't stress enough to be careful what you do with this stuff. Don't get it on your clothes and carpets. It will eventually wash it out of your skin, um, but probably best to just try and be very careful, not spill it anywhere. That's easier said than done when the stuff is attracted to magnets. Definitely try and keep your magnet separate from your ferrofluid. If your ferrofluid gets onto your magnet, it's going to be almost impossible to get off again. Um, it's <laughs> It's really worth keeping at least a piece of plastic or glass between the magnet and where you're going to be using the ferrofluid. Today I'm going to be putting my ferrofluid onto something a little bit different than a flat surface. That's what we did last time and it was really interesting, but I want to expand upon that a little bit. I'm going to be using the screws that we used in the video a couple of weeks ago. I think they're going to make some really interesting, cool shapes and behave differently with the ferrofluid than if it were on a flat surface. Let me set up my first shot and I'll show you what I mean. For my first shot, my first experiment, I'm going to be uh, putting some ferrofluid onto the head of a screw. You'll recognize this screw from the video a couple of weeks ago. Today we're going to get it all messy and see if we can't come out with something really interesting when we add some ferrofluid to it. What I've done here is actually use my uh, piece of perspex as sort of uh, the filling for a magnet and screw sandwich. The screw is magnetized onto the uh, onto the plastic uh, quite strongly actually, so I can actually pick up the magnet and the plastic uh, just by picking up the screw and that's going to make it really easy to move this whole setup around, uh, get it in focus in our camera, move it to where we want it to be. The other thing that I've got here is the Adapt Look Studio. Uh, it's sat on a little mini tripod and it's providing the uh, the light for our shot. I've simply got a white lighting arm with a diffuser on the end there, but that's going to change. I'm going to be adding a lot more lighting arms and a lot of color. Uh, my camera is a pretty standard setup. I've got the D5600. I've got a 100 millimeter macro lens. I've got it sat on a macro focus rail, um, which probably won't be used too much for the videography that you're going to see, but I might take some photo stacks as well. And that's just all sat on a tripod. I've also got a shutter release cable just so that I don't wobble the camera too much when I'm taking my stills. 
that's pretty much my setup. There's one thing that's missing, and that's going to be a background. What I've done is bring in one of our background gradient cards and another white lighting arm just to illuminate the background itself. The background cards I'll talk a little bit about in a little while uh, because I know you're probably keen to start seeing what this stuff looks like when it gets added to our screw. As you can see, this looks absolutely incredible. The, uh, the ferrofluid has magnetized to the head of the screw and those iconic spikes have started forming on the screw itself, which is actually really far away from the magnet at this point. So it's clear that the magnet is uh, magnetizing the screw and those uh, magnetic fields are still affecting the ferrofluid, even though it's really far away. This is really fun because we can play around with these spikes while it's sat on the top of the screw just by uh, moving them around and uh, spinning them around, pushing them around. They all stay absolutely magnetized to the top of the screw. Uh, I can add more. I've been using my pipette dropper here to safely add the ferrofluid without spilling it everywhere. Don't go pouring this stuff. I even got a couple of drips down onto, uh, onto my plastic, so I'm glad I used that because otherwise it'd be on my magnet. Uh, I'm going to get a few shots of this screw in its current position and I think uh, the best way to do that would be first to change my lighting around a little bit. Moving my white lighting arm around makes drastic differences to the way that the light is reflecting off these spikes. So finding the right position is going to be critical. The other thing that I want to do is because we've got this green background, I want to see if we can't add uh, a little bit of complementary color, be that green or maybe some blue, just onto these spikes so that they stand out a little bit more. I'm going to grab a third white lighting arm and start using uh, my color filters here to add some extra colored highlights to the ferrofluid. I've brought in a third lighting arm, I've got my green filter on here and I've also brought my camera just a little bit closer to get a nice close shot of this crown of ferrofluid on top of my screw. One tip here for uh, playing around with your ferrofluid if you don't want to use your pipette dropper to push it around or perhaps you're doing some videography work and you want to uh, get that motion without uh, some weird object sticking into your frame blow on it just very very softly. I'm going to blow right now and let's see what happens. You can see that the ferrofluid ripples and shakes and it actually moves around a little bit so blowing in the right spot can actually make it twist around on the top of your screw. Uh, you can also blow a little bit harder and make it ripple from side to side, growing and destroying spikes as it goes. This stuff is so cool. I can't uh, explain to you how cool it is actually to see it here with your own eyes. One of the struggles that you're going to have is your depth of field. Uh, the focus point that you're going to have to choose, uh, it's going to have to be somewhere in the middle of all of these spikes. I'm shooting at F16 right now and that is only enough to get maybe one of these spikes in focus when you're this close up. Of course, focus stacking for stills is absolutely an option. You just need to make sure that you're not doing any of that blowing and everything stays nice and still. You should be able to get a pretty nice stack. 
Uh, I'm going to start playing around with this, maybe add a little bit more ferrofluid and change my lighting around. And then we can take a little look at uh, one other item that I've got that might be interesting uh, with some ferrofluid on it. I've been playing around with my ferrofluid for uh, quite a while now and I've got some really good shots. I'm really happy with how these are coming out with those colourful backgrounds, the colourful light shining off of those uh, ferrofluid spikes, as well as a little bit of white light in there just so that you can still uh, tell what you're looking at and, well, it's a bit hard to tell what you're looking at really, isn't it? Because it's hard to um, picture what this strange fluid is if you've never seen it before. I am enjoying using these colourful backgrounds though. Last time we mostly used black backgrounds which was achieved through settings. If you want to know how to do that without using a black backdrop, I'll uh, link a video up on the top right hand side of your screen now, uh, which explains how to set your settings and light your uh, subject so that you don't have to use a backdrop. Today I'm enjoying using my uh, new backdrop cards. Now every Adapter Look Studio pack comes with a little welcome pack uh, folder with bits and bobs in uh, inside and you'll get two backdrop cards in there. Uh, they're double sided so you can get two colours on each backdrop card. When I mentioned that in a video a couple of weeks ago, um, I got a lot of emails. We were answering emails for quite some time uh, to explain what these new backdrop cards are and how to get them. Uh, because of those emails, because of those requests, we're actually going to make them available for purchase on our website. They should be up there now. And we've got a full collection of all different colours, uh, double-sided of course. There's actually 12 colours here that you'll get on a nice, thick A5 cards in a nice little folder uh, and they make for really nice backdrops for your macro photos. They're really, really um, uh, colourful and great for just placing in behind your subject, uh, moving around a little bit because they all have a little bit of a gradient on them so you can get, say, pink through to purple and that will make for a really nice backdrop. I'm going to be using them for the rest of this shoot, but I have another subject that I want to try out, and it's sort of a companion to our screw. What's the opposite to a screw? The, uh, the screwdriver. I've got a little screwdriver head here which fits into those interchangeable screwdrivers that you get everywhere, and I'm going to move my camera down, uh, keep my setup pretty much the same, and put some ferrofluid on the end of this screwdriver head. First though, I need to get rid of all of the uh, ferrofluid that's currently on top of my screw. The way that I'm going to do that is simply to reverse the process using my pipette and suck up some of the uh, ferrofluid from the top of my screw. I'm not going to be able to get all of it, uh, there's going to be some left on my, uh, on my surface, uh, but we'll just have to deal with that and take uh, the loss of a little bit of ferrofluid. I'm just going to be very careful not to get it uh, all over the place when I'm cleaning up. As you can see, when you add the ferrofluid to a screwdriver head, it creates a completely different formation to what we saw when we were adding it to the screw itself. Uh, it's formed almost like an upside down acorn shape with uh, little spikes on the very tip and then these elongated ridges down the side and a nice little crown of spikes down at the bottom where the magnetic force is clearly uh, a little bit stronger shooting out of the sides um, and then it's a little bit less as the, uh, as the shape of the screwdriver head um, changes as it goes up to that point at the top. 
This makes for an equally interesting subject, I think. Um, I've been playing around with my uh, different coloured backdrop cards, I've been playing around with my lighting, of course, moving things around and just trying out different angles for uh, my camera, my composition, um, for my lighting as well, so I can get different reflections coming from different directions and, of course, different coloured light as well. Uh, uh, blowing still works, you can uh, blow these little acorns and they'll shiver and move around. Not quite as much as uh, they did on the top of the screws, but it's still interesting. I absolutely love the really interesting shapes that this stuff creates both on the head of our screw and the screwdriver head. I wasn't expecting them to make those weird bulbous shapes, but I guess it's all to do with how the magnetic fields are, uh, are emanating from the uh, particular metal object that you're using with the extension of your magnet. So let me know what you think to my shoot today, to my videography and to my stills. Uh, you can go and see all of those stills over on our website. I'll uh, put all of my um, settings up there as well and uh, the, uh, the stacked shots that I've done today, you can go and look at all of those over on our blog. There'll be a link down in the description along with all of the other links from today, including where to get magnets and the uh, ferrofluid, uh, where to get our background gradient cards and of course where to buy the Adapter Look Studio as well. I'll also throw in some links to some other macro photography tutorials that you guys might enjoy, including the other uh, ferrofluid video that we did last time. While you're down in the uh, description and comment section, make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps us out and it lets me know that I'm doing a good job and that you guys are enjoying the content. If you want more of that content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button. Uh, that will notify you every time we upload a new video and you won't miss out on any of our future macro photography uh, tutorials, ideas and inspiration videos. Uh, that's all I've got time for now, guys, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.